everyone. In today's video, I wanna show you how to set up periodic tasks in your Django Celery app. So with Celery, you know you can create tasks like a one-off task and it will run in the background. But with Django Celery B, you can schedule those tasks as well. So here I have like a schedule called My Schedule and the idea here is it's gonna run it every 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds it's gonna run a task of my choosing. So I'm gonna show you how to set this all up. You'll see that it's pretty easy to do. <laughs> and if you do need any help with this beyond the video, I do work with people in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So just check out prettyprinted.com slash coaching or the link in the description below to learn more about that. So now let's get into working on this example of integrating Django Celery Beat. So to get started, let me show you what I have already. It's pretty simple. I have a Django app with Celery already set up. Here I have a path that points to the index. So go to views here and it calls my task dot delay. And this task is defined here. So it's just looping uh, from one to 10 and it's going to print the number and then it's going to sleep for one second. And then after all that's done, it's going to return task complete. So eventually this will be the task that I schedule. But for now, this is the setup. So let me just show you this working. And I've already run this once, but I'll run it again. So let's go and start the task again and go back to celery. And now we see it received the task and now it's printing the number zero through 10 and it's just printing one per second and you see it's done there. Okay, so we've created a Celery task. So this part should be familiar to you if you've used Celery before, you've watched my videos with Celery, but now we wanna get into the scheduling part. This works well if you wanna kick off the tasks based off some user action. So if they go to a certain endpoint, then it kicks off a task. But if you wanted to schedule a task and especially schedule it dynamically, uh, this is where the next part comes in. So what I'll do is I'll stop this. I'll go back to my main terminal and then I'll go ahead and install Django dash celery dash B. Okay, so it's been installed. So now I need to go over to my settings.py and add Django Celery B to the list of installed apps. So I'll just put it up here, Django underscore celery underscore beat. And then I'll need to migrate something. So Python manage.py migrate. So this will migrate the migrations from the Django Celery B library. And now I'll go ahead and start up the app again. So run server and I'll go over to my browser and I'll go to the admin dashboard and log in using the super user account I created earlier. And we see here, I have these five tables. I have clocked, cron tabs, intervals, periodic tasks, and solar events. So you don't need to use all of this, but at a minimum, you're going to have periodic tasks. Clocked, cron tabs, intervals, and solar events, those are schedules that you can have for a task to run on. So for example, with solar events, it depends on like the time of sunrise, the time of sunset, stuff like that. For intervals, you can say like every two hours run it. Cron tabs, you run it based off of like cron and Unix. And then clock means you wanna run it at a specific time. So you have these options for the schedules, but of course the periodic task itself is the most important thing. And now I want to create another view to schedule a task. So what I'll do is I'll call this schedule task, and this will take in requests. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an interval task. So what I can do at the top is import from Django celery beat dot models, periodic task and interval schedule. So periodic task is the table I was just talking about in the admin dashboard and the interval is if you wanna do something like every 10 minutes or two hours or whatever you want. So first I need to set up a interval here in the view. So the imagine the user goes to the URL and it hits this view. So I want to set up an interval. So to do that, I'll create an interval object and also like a blank, this is for any error message. And what I wanna do is I want to use interval schedule dot objects dot get or create. So if the schedule already exists, then it will just return that to me. If it doesn't exist, then it will go ahead and create it. Cause you only have to create like a 10 minute interval once. You don't have to create it every time you wanna do something every 10 minutes. There's only one interval and then the task will get that interval. So for this, I wanna say, I wanna run a particular task every 30 seconds. So I'll put every 30 and then I have to give it like a time period. So, so period equals and then interval schedule dot seconds, right? 
So now I have this interval for running something every 30 seconds, and now I want to create a periodic task. So here, since I don't need anything, I won't assign it to a variable. So objects create, and I'm going to use the interval I just created. So whatever I put here is going to run every 30 seconds. So now I need to give this a name. I'll call this my schedule. I need to give it a task. So the task is based off the location. So it's in the example folder and then in the tasks file and then it's called my underscore tasks. So that's how you get the name of the task. And then you can pass some arguments here if you wanted to. Uh, you have to pass it as JSON. So you can do like JSON.dumps. And if you had like a list of arguments you wanted to pass, you can say like arg1, arg2, and so on. But I don't have any arguments for my task, so I don't need to pass anything, but that's what it looks like. And this will be dump s, not just dump. And then also you have an option of one-off tasks. I'll put it here, although I won't turn it on. So if you want a one-off task, you just put one-off equals true. But, but typically with this, you'd use a clocked interval instead of a interval schedule like this. So let me return uh, tasks scheduled. And then I'll create a URL for this. So we'll say path and then schedule. And this will be views.scheduleTask. And the name can be schedule as well, just like that. Okay, so that should be set up there. And now what I wanna do is I wanna turn on Celery again. So let me go back here and turn on Celery. So we see here, Celery has started with no problems. I also need to set up Celery Beat here. So what I'll do is I'll turn on my virtual environment here and I'll start Celery Beat. So it's kind of similar to how you start uh, Celery by itself, but it's slightly different. Instead of worker, you wanna use Beat. You can also do dash L info. And then I need to tell it what scheduler to use. So the scheduler is responsible for telling Celery Beat when something's supposed to happen. So the scheduler in this case comes from Django Celery Beat. So we have scheduler and then Django Celery Beat dot schedulers. And then in the schedulers, I have the database scheduler like this. So it looks like it started properly. Celery is started. So now let's go to that endpoint. So let me open up a new tab and I'll go to slash schedule. And I just added an extra slash in the URL. So the slash should not be there. So I'll just do that again. And this one is an error that you get without a response. And that's pretty easy. You may have noticed that I didn't put the HTTP response around the task scheduled. So this view has to return some kind of Django response. So now if I try this, uh, we see it already exists as a scheduled item. And the reason is, is because the code failed after I started the task. So let me go ahead and refresh this and go to periodic tasks. And we see I have this my scheduled task created. The other one was created automatically by Celery. So here we see it's calling example.tasks.mytasks. We also have this other thing we can use where it's a dropdown, but since we called it from the code, we can just pass in a custom task. We see it's set every 30 seconds and that's it. So now if I go back over to VS Code and look at Celery, uh, we see that it's counting up uh, zero to 10 and it's gonna do it every 30 seconds. So I'll just wait for it to start again. It should start any second now. And we see it's now counting up zero through 10 and that's because this thing is running every 30 seconds. If I go over here to Celery Beat, we see that it's sending the do task by schedule every 30 seconds. So we see 35, 05, 35, it's doing it all automatically. And note that the first one happened 30 seconds after I started everything up. So going back here, like I said, there are other types of schedules you can create. You can create these on the admin dashboard if you want, or you can create them in code. You see here, there's an example of this one uh, because this was generated by Celery. But for like solar events, you can just add one here. Say you wanna see uh, solar noon as a event as an interval type or as a schedule type uh, for a particular latitude and longitude, you can do something like that. Uh, you can go to intervals here and you can set it to be like, you know, every 30 minutes, every five days, or you can go to cron tab here. Uh, you can add one using the cron syntax. And finally clock, like I said, this one is for a particular time. So you just put in a date and a time and it will run the task at that time. 
So as you can see, it's pretty simple to use. Really, it's just using Django models. So as long as you have the right schedule object from the schedule models and then create like a periodic task object, then it's going to schedule the task for you. And as long as Celery and Celery B are running, it's going to run those tasks according to whatever schedule that you set up. And as a last thing I want to show you, is you can also get the results of everything that runs. So right now, like my task is running, but no results are being stored anywhere. So what I'll do is I'll stop everything and I'll install this thing called Django Celery Results. So pip install Django-Celery-Results and it's quick to install. I'll go over to settings.py and I wanna add it to the settings. So here I'll just do Django Celery Results and I'll migrate. So Python manage.py migrate, and it will migrate the things from Django Celery results. And then down here at the bottom, I wanna add a couple of Celery settings. So first will be Django result backend, and I just need to set this to Django-DB, and then Celery results extended, and I'll set this to true. And We'll see what happens with this, but basically it's just going to store the results of all the tasks into the database so I can see them. So let me start up the server again. Let me start, let me start Celery again, and then let me start Celery Beat again. And if we go over to the admin dashboard, we see more tables in here. I see that there is a, a, a task results table and this is the one that's going to have the results of the task. And while we wait for the schedule tasks to run, we see there are different statuses, so failure, pending, received, and so on. We have the dates we can filter by, and then we have the names and so on. So once one finishes, so we see it sent the task, and did it finish here? It did. So if I refresh this, I see the result of the tasks that ran according to the schedule. So this isn't the information for the schedule. This is the information for the task that ran as a result of the schedule. So we see the resulting data, just task complete. We see the time that it happened. Uh, we also see uh, the other information like where it ran, uh, the content type, and so on. And every time there's a task that runs, it adds it. So we see there's another one because another one just happened because it's running every 30 seconds. And in periodic tasks, if I look here, I can see like the last time this ran. And there are other options here, but don't really need them for a basic implementation of schedules. So that's all I want to show in this video. That was like a really basic uh, overview of how to use Django Celery results in Django Celery Beat to set up schedules in your Django app. So you can create dynamic schedules uh, in your Django app. So if you have any questions about anything I did in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.